Story 1. Said casually after the hookup, I have to get up early tomorrow because I have a court date for hitting my ex-wife. Used to live with my best friend in college. One day, I got up. I knew she had gone to the bar the night before but was at work. But I heard sounds coming from her room. I checked my phone and she texted me, Don't worry about the guy in my room. Uh, what? Turned out she'd met a guy at the bar and hit it off with him. But he didn't have anywhere to live because he'd just gotten out of jail. So she invited him to live with us. And now it was just me and him alone in the house. Basically spent the entire day hiding. He ended up staying with us until he found a place to live. And it ended our friendship. Over the next months, he was in and out of court dates, fighting multiple counts of assault against his ex. Allegedly, he was being blackmailed by her, and she was crazy. He was definitely kind of a prick in my opinion, but not exactly abusive. That I ever saw. They ended up getting married, and they've been together for like 15 years and have kids. He actually seems like he's cleaned up a lot, and is a nice guy now. She, however, hates me. Story 2. Not me, but my friend. Matched with a woman online, and after they talked for a few days, she said she asked to tell him something, and it might be a deal breaker. He googled her name immediately, and it turns out that she served time because she was a teacher and slept with a student. The mugshot was unmistakable. So then he talked to her, and she brought up something else entirely that wasn't that bad. Like she lived with her parents or something. Story 3. A regular at a bar I went to was clearly into me. We had similar interests, so eventually we went home after last call one night. He told me the next day he was homeless, and was at the bar so much because he did odd jobs in exchange for drinks. He was persistent in asking what I was doing that day, and I said I was seeing some friends to watch the Eagles game. He found out where I was and proceeded to ask if we were in a relationship. I said no, and he sent me a bunch of long-winded messages about how he thought he loved me, but I'm clearly just like the other girls and a cow who broke his heart. I learned this months later, but apparently he was trying to get all the regulars to talk to me for him after I blocked him. He truly didn't understand how creepy and fixated he came off. I literally had nightmares about him showing up to my apartment, since he knew where I lived. Story 4. I had a date tell me, unprompted, that he used to be an IV drug user in a gang, and his family was heavily involved in Mexican drug cartels. He also opened the date with, Sorry I'm late, my brother just got arrested for hitting his girlfriend, which he tried to justify, and he had to terminate an employee because she missed too many days of work due to a miscarriage. He told me she could have been lying about it. Meanwhile, he called me an awful criminal because I smoked pot and occasionally sold extra to my friends, and at the time I was doing community service, which I loved because I served at an animal shelter, for not being able to afford to pay a speeding ticket. He worked in HR at his corporate job. He also asked me six times if I was seeing someone else, talking to other people, or had kids. Story 5 he told me with a full physical reenactment about how he'd gotten into a fist fight with the guy and kept beating him bloody until his then-girlfriend got scared and begged him to stop. He also told a couple racist jokes and told me he was in political legal trouble with the government for being involved in protests. I didn't ask for details. I had poor service in the area but managed to get an Uber to pick me up from the street corner as we were walking alone in the dark. Literally felt the need to escape but he forced a kiss before I could get in the car and leave. This guy was also a professor at a local university. Story 6. All on the same date. I looked a lot like his mom when she was younger. I would make a really great dominatrix. No kink shaming, just not for me. And when I said as much, he decided to attempt to convince me why anyone would like me to, and that me disliking them for me having to be one for them would also be a huge turn on. I acted and had almost the same personality as his sister. I was wrong about not liking the food he had made for the picnic in the park. It was a dish meant to be hot served cold. It was terrible and had changes from the normal recipe to his family tradition one, which made it even worse. He didn't want the day to end, so attempted to refuse to drive me back to my car. I texted my cousin and had her call me in a panic, which I placed on speakerphone so he would take me back. 
No matter how much I felt I knew a guy, I never have been in their car without sending a photo of the license plates, and when the person receiving it should hear back from me anymore, because it scared me so badly. Honestly, there was probably more on the date that I just don't remember. I will never let someone talk me into going on a date with a nice guy ever again. Story 7. I didn't mind that the man had forgotten his wallet. Everyone's allowed to have one of those days. After dinner, he asked if we could stop by Target's because he'd forgotten to get his mother a birthday gift. I think it was the next day or something. Can't remember. We walked through Target's and he chose some kind of lounge chair, which was around $30. He said he'd pay me back and I had no problem with that. The problem occurred when we went to pay. A bag of M&Ms had broken and spilled on the conveyor belt and the floor underneath it. My date got really excited and started picking up M&Ms off the conveyor belt and eating them. I was horrified. I always knew I was a bit of a clean freak and somewhat of a germaphobe, but it immediately skyrocketed. I told him that I would happily buy him a bag of M&Ms for himself so he wouldn't have to eat the fallen ones. He couldn't understand why I thought it was gross to eat M&Ms off that dirty, sticky conveyor belt. Thankfully, he didn't attempt to kiss me, which was my biggest fear from that moment forward. We never had a second date, and I never heard from him again, which I was very glad about. Story 8. Criminal. Kidnap someone. First date. Didn't know this until the cop showed up with lights behind my car. Asked me if I lost my passport. I obviously said no and got worried if I lost my passport. He asked me to step out of my car and verify this information on the screen on his car. As soon as I walked to his police cruiser, he asked me if I knew my passenger's criminal background, and I said no. He told me that he was out on bail, history of kidnapping, stabbing, and DUIs. Saved my life, and I kicked him out of my car while the cop followed me to my house. I was 19. He was on house arrest with a bracelet to his ankle. I don't know what happened to him, but I definitely never dated anyone from the internet since. Story 9. The date was going really well, until the mood shifted to being a little more flirty, and she said, So, what do you do to relax? I was pretty sure I saw where it was going, and might end up with an invite back to her place. But I wasn't really sure, so I played it neutral, and said, reading with a glass of whiskey. She then proceeded to tell me that she took baths with her socks on. I laughed, and then realized she wasn't laughing. She was deeply offended that I laughed, and I was like, Okay, you're serious? And she said she was. I tried to be understanding, everyone has their thing that's weird, but she was too offended. When she asked how I could judge her for liking something, I told her it was surprising to me because probably the only thing I like worse than wet socks is wet jeans. She went over the top, including dumping a drink on me and leaving. Look, I get it, okay? Everyone has their thing. But I think you also have to understand when your thing could be considered weird. If she'd even said, Look, I know it sounds weird, but I really like then I wouldn't have even judged her much. There's self-awareness in that. But I'm now convinced she was a budding serial killer. Story 10. Not a first date, but an interview. I was looking to hire a cook for my kitchen, and a guy came in for the job. He was wearing a chef's coat, but was very stoic, and only gave one-word answers to the questions I asked him. I couldn't really get him to open up, so I started asking less work-related questions. I like to try and turn the conversation into what he likes to do outside of work, hoping he'll actually open up. I finally cracked him open a bit when I found out he was into video games. I'm a geek myself, as I like to play video games and enjoyed building my own PC. So we started to talk about PC specs and whatnot. I told him that I had a 3080 Ti, and he proceeded to respond by saying, Oh, I like that graphics card. When you slit a hooker's throat in GTA 5, you can see the reflections in the blood. It was safe to say we passed on his application. Story 11. I hung out with some boy at high school for a while. We got along pretty well. I always stayed late, and one time he asked me if I wanted to stay overnight. We were friends, nothing else, and sleep on the couch. I was 15, so I was eager to go. My mom wasn't happy about that and did not let me go. She said she wasn't comfortable with it, and I kind of understood her, but, well, I was 15. 
So I told him my mom wouldn't let me go because she wasn't comfortable with it and maybe I could get assaulted or whatever. He started laughing and thought it was incredibly funny. <laughs> so your mom thinks I'm going to exploit you when you stay over. Oh my gosh. Yeah, friendship ended shortly after because he got even weirder after that. Proceeded to stalk me for two years. Story 12. I met this guy and we talked on the phone for about a week or so. I tend to ask a lot of questions to get to know someone. I asked if he had kids or if he had ever been married, and he said no. In the middle of our first date, we just finished eating, and suddenly he grabs my hands and blurts out, I have to tell you something. I lied to you about something. He sounded so panicked and wrought with guilt, and proceeded to tell me that he lied about having kids. He had five kids with five different women. Stupid naive me was understanding and we dated on and off for a couple of years. During those couple of years, he added two or three kids, and revealed he used to work for some shady people collecting debts in Vegas. He recently popped up in my life by contacting me from a contraband cell phone from prison. I googled him, and discovered he's doing time because he apparently had used a relative's phone, and when he gave it back, left a bunch of child on it, and they turned him in. Story 13. We were at a bar having drinks. She told me she was having problems with her ex because he kept stalking her. She said it wasn't really his fault because she's a Wiccan and she cast a love spell on him last year and now he can't resist her. She told me the love spell was a potion she made by slipping certain ingredients into his wine. One of those ingredients was her own menstrual blood. She put period blood in the dude's drink. She was fine with that. She was just upset that she couldn't figure out the counterspell to get him to stop loving her. I was more than a little weirded out by this, as she had had several opportunities to slip something into my drink, should she have chosen to. I waited a few minutes, excused myself for the bathroom, and left via the back door. Story 14. I had been talking to this guy for a while, and we'd met in person at lunchtime, but didn't actually have a date. So we finally went on a date, and it was a really great date. We went back to his house and were hanging out and making out a little. He suddenly tells me, in a casual way, that he's married. But they're trying out a separation because she thinks she might be a lesbian. He went on to explain that she was on a date with a woman and would be home soon. He just wanted to give me a heads up so it wouldn't be weird. She came home about 20 minutes later as I was politely trying to make my escape. She was very nice, but wanted to get to know me so we could be friends, and I was stuck there for at least an hour trying not to be rude. I don't have an issue with people being poly, and years later I was actually in a poly relationship. However, I had less than zero desire to be involved in whatever they had going on. I could just tell it was going to turn into a dumpster fire. Story 15. Went on a date with a neighbor I was friendly with, but didn't know very well. Five minutes in, I found out he had surrendered a dog to the crappy municipal shelter I worked at, so I was kind of done with him then. Stayed to finish my drink I'd paid for, but didn't really talk much. On the way home, we walked. He kept trying to hold my hand and wouldn't take no for an answer. I ended up locking my elbow and holding him at arm's length the whole way home. When we got to my building, he kept begging to come in. I told him no. He wanted to kiss me. I said no. He pinned me against my own fence and kissed me anyway. I went inside, locked the door, and turned out all the lights. He banged on my door for probably 20 minutes while repeatedly calling and texting me. Story 16. Some replies on here are downright scary. But here's my recent first date. Dinner and a concert. Within a few minutes of waiting for a table at a restaurant, he tells me his dad is dead. Once seated, tells me how he's had manic episodes before and can't always tell what's real versus imagined. Then tells me tons of details about his family and how I'll fit in because several of his family members and I have a shared dietary restriction. Also explains how his dad died young from alcoholism. On the way to the concert, he tells me there's a sword in the trunk of his car. At the concert venue, he jokingly tries to get the guy ahead of us to buy our tickets and nearly gets punched. Once inside, he is scream-telling me about the last time he was there, and how the guy he lent his vape to passed out on the floor and an ambulance had to come and pick him up. He goes on to tell me about how his sister lost her virginity, and tons of details about her dating life and past boyfriends. I told him that I had no interest in that subject. He said, 
I can't tell if you hate me. And I said, <laughs> neither can I. He excused himself and went to the bathroom. He then came out and told me he just gave himself a pep talk in the mirror. I thought it was a joke, but realize now he likely did. He has a few drinks during the night and then tells me, you made me get drunk, revealing that the last time he drank was on his birthday when he needed to be hospitalized for a manic episode. I called myself an Uber, told him I was leaving and left the concert early. He texted me later that night saying I sure know how to make someone feel like a piece of crap, and he's such a nice guy. Story 17. Three very casual meetings for coffee dates while getting to know one another. He throws out the question, What's something about you that no one would suspect or guess? Answered, and then asked him to answer the same. He very quickly and nonchalantly says, I have four kids. Technically six? I don't have custody or visitation with any of them. I miss them sometimes. He had the state step in and take all of his kids while he was with two different women. He considered the two kids taken into state custody as not really his kids anymore because he doesn't have any chance of seeing them. His parents had taken in the other four kids, relocated, and went no contact. He was holding out hope he would see them again. When pressed about why he lost custody along with his exes, he said, Some people can't mind their own business and think they should tell you how to love your kids. None of my kids complained, and we had very special connections. I read between the lines and bolted. Story 18. Here's a reverse. Most disturbing and incorrect thing someone learned about me on a first date. We were on a walk by the San Francisco Bay, talking about random things. At the time, we were probably a mile away from a road or another human being. Somehow, the conversation got around to storing things. I mentioned that for long-term storage, I'd just stuff things into an ammo can. In my circle of friends growing up, we frequented military surplus stores, since you could get some pretty great stuff for cheap. When we talked about ammo cans, what we meant was cheap, durable, waterproof storage. However, when I said ammo can to her, she heard, I have so many guns that I have special storage for the ammunition. In fact, I'm so gun crazy that I have lots and lots of extra ammo cans, just in case I need even more ammunition. In fact, I have so many ammo cans that I think they are completely reasonable storage devices for things that aren't ammo. I am clearly dangerously insane and you are alone with me a mile away from any possible help. I continued blathering on for a while until I looked over at her. Although she was trying to play it cool, she definitely had a deer in the headlights look. I rewound our conversation in my head and figured out that instead of ammo can, I should have said cheap, durable, waterproof storage. It took me a while to explain the situation and for her flight response to wear off. We've now been married for 12 years. Story 1. Dishonesty is my main one. If you can't trust them, then there's no reason to even date them. Because you're always going to worry what they're doing when they're not with you. In my circumstance, I've been with my boyfriend for six years, and it's been great. When we first started talking seriously, he said he watched a show that I was talking about. We would talk about it, and I didn't know until like two or three years later that he actually never saw the show, but his sister had, so he would ask her about it. While that was being dishonest, I took it as a white lie and that he did so because he wanted to talk to me even if it was about something he's never seen. Just a funny story on this, to show this shouldn't be the case all the time. Story 2. Lack of empathy slash compassion. This is what killed my 23-year-old marriage. Her lack of compassion and empathy for anyone other than herself was shocking and heartbreaking. It wasn't always like that. It just slowly developed, like Polaroid over time. She's proud of it. Story 3. This sounds dumb, but if she's not into me, I am not interested. If she plays hard to get, I'm done. I'm not playing the games anymore. You'd be surprised how often a woman has said she was into me, but won't do anything at all to act like she actually is. Yeah, that is a weird one. You experience a couple women who make it very clear they're into you. It changes the way you deal with women. I don't like second-guessing what we're doing. There are women out there who think playing hard to get is a way to know that a guy cares enough. Well, I'll agree. I don't care enough to chase a woman. Ever. Story 4. Any sort of hard to get playing games, you need to work for me bullshit. If you're into me, 
just say so. If you're not into me, just say so. End of fucking story. I think the majority of people are pushing for positive femininity, which should be encouraged but is being hijacked by a bunch of charlatans saying to women that you should all be treated like royalty and you deserve better and the man is always wrong, which I think leads to this crazy game-playing, prodigy-feeling women. You are no different than anyone else. You should be respected and loved as a human being, not just because you're a woman. At least in my experience, this is what I've seen. That, or if they act as if you're there to entertain them. Too many profiles listed as, I'm bored, entertain me, please be able to hold a conversation. Those types of women I've found are the literal worst at holding a conversation because they are so entirely uninterested in everything and won't engage with you on any topic. They don't do anything. They aren't passionate about anything. They don't ask questions about what you were passionate about. They answer any question you ask with like one to two word responses. I hate it. I'm not a thing to entertain people. I'm looking for a connection and conversation. If you aren't interested in the slightest, then why did we match and or start this conversation in the first place? Just leave or walk away. Story 5. Inability to acknowledge being wrong. Being able to do that and grow with me as an individual was literally one of the biggest things that led to me falling in love with my current girlfriend. I will never again ever be in a relationship with a woman who doesn't have that quality because seeing how much better this relationship has been than any of my previous, I just can't ever go back. Story 6. Social Media I don't want every waking moment of my relationship plastered on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. I dated one girl for a year who didn't have a smartphone, didn't have internet at her house, and didn't even own a TV. It was surprisingly nice. Honest. When we spent time together, we spent our time together. A lot of people are posting timeless things like honesty and integrity and so on, which are true, but this is a good example of a modern one. When someone becomes obsessed with social media, they inevitably start putting on a show rather than experiencing the world. Special occasions, sure. But if someone is going around asking me to help them get the perfect shot framed for totally mundane things like dinner or a walk or their dog they've had for a while doing totally normal dog things and so on, yeah, that's a no. Story 7. Distant Personality that shit can take a lot out of me. I'm an anxious avoidant person, and I make clear conscious efforts daily to ensure my partner doesn't feel the effects of that. Just because my childhood resulted in this type of personality attachment style doesn't make it an excuse to treat my partner poorly. I just need to be honest with my partner, have very good communication, and make a conscious effort to show him love and attention. Sometimes, I will forget to show affection for a while, and he'll give me a gentle reminder that he would appreciate a hug or something. I kick myself in the butt and do my best to shower him in affection. It hasn't always been like this to make it work. We've been together for 11 years, and we have had many ups and downs, especially in the area of my attachment style. But me being able to acknowledge and recognize when my anxious avoidant personality may impact our relationship is key, and making efforts to combat it greatly helps us. Story 8. I have had a few women I met online start talking about how supportive I can be for their children before I even met them. Like, if you just shop for a replacement for their non-existent dad, I am out. Yeah, I've had this happen as well. I have seen single moms mentioned a few times, and while it's not a deal breaker, my most recent ex being an exception, it mostly is. Most I meet don't want any more kids, and I do it on my own. But mostly, I dated a single mom whose kid became so attached to me that it killed me and her when we broke up. We stayed friends, and she started dating a new guy her daughter didn't like. She was desperate to get us all back together. I had to remove myself from the picture completely. It broke me. I wasn't serious with a woman with kids until my most recent ex. But her father wasn't in the picture, and I'd known her since I was a baby. Story 9. General punctuality. Though this is a state with friends, too. If you're going to be late, let me know when you know. 
If you live 30 minutes away and text me when you were leaving 5 minutes before we're due to meet, you knew you were going to be late 25 minutes ago. It's a small thing, I know. But I've known people like that, and I've waited in the cold too often. Story 10. Making fun of someone else's hobbies or putting them down for it. This can also apply to friends as well. All I ask is that you show some interest or curiosity in it. It could be something as simple as asking questions about it. Story 11. Not having any goals other than having fun. My ex just lived to go out every night with her friends. No future there. And an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. And her ex-boyfriend after a few drinks one night. That was a cluster f of chaos that I am glad to be free from. Story 12. Inconsistent communication style. Just feels like I'm being strung along. Also don't date single mothers. I'm sure they're nice and the kids are great, but I'm just not in a place in my life where I'm comfortable with that kind of situation. Story 13. Influencers. Or even worse, a girl who thinks she's an influencer. The obsession with social media is incredibly unhealthy and infects every other aspect of their lives. Story 14. At my age, I'm pretty honest about who I am and what I want. I usually let people know right off the bat that I'm autistic. I can totally understand if that's a deal breaker for somebody else and they don't want to handle it. But I've had some people want to test if I'm actually autistic. Or try to help me get over it. Ugh. I won't pursue any further. I can't just not be autistic. Story 15. Well, after a really bad three and a half year relationship with an NPD woman and taking five years to heal from that trauma, then after that, being back in the dating scene and dealing with being led on, ghosted, lied to, and stood up constantly, dealt with another girl's false accusations and stalking, which resulted in me having to get a restraining order on her. Had another that broke up with me because of my hobbies. Later got back together and then later stole from a store and laughed it off like it was no big deal. I was so done. I was sick of being mistreated, abused, and taken for granted. I was sick of dishonesty and lies, lack of accountability. All these things were deal breakers. As soon as I stopped giving a shit about women and dating and just gave up entirely, I found the one. I started a new job and met her within the first week of being there. We just celebrated our two-year anniversary about a month ago. I've been through hell and back, but it all led me to her. And we have a very happy, healthy relationship. She truly treats me well, loves me, supports me, and gives me everything no other woman has. Story 16 Someone who starts off with a list of demands and expectations or things they don't like, rather than saying what they want or like or expressing themselves so you can get to know them. I've seen this is just a huge red flag for women that are generally just unhappy with life and not fun to be around. Story 17. Height preferences on dating profiles. It's just rude. I can't help being 5'7". I have been this height for ages. I get preferences and stuff. But seeing if you're under six foot, don't bother on the regular is a bit of a downer. Also, horses. I went out with a horse and girl, and it was a car crash. I don't blame the actual horses, but horses make girls get a bit weird. If you know, you know. Story 18. For me, when I was dating, it was women who didn't know how to cook or clean. That may seem a bit misogynistic, but I am someone who cooks and cleans and can keep a house. The number of people I would go on dates with that didn't have those skills was a bit baffling to me. How do you feed yourself? Is it takeout every night? I wouldn't expect a potential partner to be unable to do household things that I do, nor one that was unwilling to share the burden of keeping a place together. Story 19. Honestly, anything to the effect of men are trash or... I hate that I'm attracted to men in their dating profile. Like, I get it. A lot of women have had a lot of really bad experiences with men. And at the same time, I'm not here to fix anyone. And I really hate being treated like one of the good ones. If you really hate men to the extent that you need to declare it on your dating profile, you should probably be working that out with a therapist. Story 20. I am a teacher. 
I worked very hard to become a teacher, and I earn a lot less as a teacher than my potential. I'm a licensed thermodynamic engineer with a master's. I do the job I do because I was let down at every turn by the school system, and I want to be the person who never lets a kid down and never tells a neurodiverse kid to be more realistic. I do it out of love for my students and a sense of duty to do my best by them. So many people I date can't seem to understand why I would give up being wealthy to do it. Even after I explain my rationale, they just seem so obsessed with getting as much money as possible. I cannot get past that. Story 21. Having a guy best friend who is flirty. The kind of girl who keeps this best friend as a backup or hookup instead of being a platonic friend. And stay away from any female who says something along the lines of, I don't have any female friends because female friends are b backstabby, etc. It's a canon event, and every guy should go through this at least once. Story 22. A lack of mental health awareness, for lack of a better term. I am not a mental health specialist, and I cannot be your therapist. If you have issues and are actively working on them, very different than just expecting me to be the one to fix them. Story 23. Just dating in general. Trying to find the will to date or try and date in this day and age is just non-existent. I look around at friends and family who are dating and see how unhappy they are in their current relationships and dating lives. And it's not making me enthusiastic enough to even try it. I know I'm not a very attractive guy, and so that plays a part in the reluctance. But between reading shit online and what's happening to those around me, it's like, well... I guess I'm gonna die alone. Story 24. After four decades and dozens of failed relationships, this is easy. If she tries to change you into someone she wants instead of accepting you for who you are, your partner should inspire you to be a better version of yourself, not dress you up to be someone you're not. This also goes for setting rules on how you can eat, walk, dress, drive, who you can talk to, be friends with, etc. Any interrogation about your wages, earning, wealth, stocks, or material possessions. Being self-made, having money, and being financially stable are important, but passing your W-2 across the dinner table on first dates should never happen. If she even asks, show her the door. Communication. It's important. I don't care if it's text, call, smoke signals, or kodo drums. Let's make sure we prioritize each other and stay connected, communicating. Don't hole up and brood over something that bothers you. Let's take a hike and talk about it. Likewise for ghosting. If we're going back and forth and having a conversation over text and you suddenly disappear for hours or days, major red flags. If you have to go and can't reply for a while, just drop a text saying so. If you come to the table empty-handed with just a list of what you want from me, instead of coming to the table with a list of your best qualities and attributes, that's how you're leaving the table. Empty-handed. BPD, bipolar, or significant history of eating disorders. I've had this trifecta more than once, and even had this in a single person. It's not for me, and it's incompatible with my lifestyle, so they can move on. Hard pass. Story 25. When you ask them what they do for fun and their response is they smoke weed. I'm not a prude. If you smoke weed at parties or whatever, it's whatevs. But when someone says smoking weed is the thing they do for fun, like it's their hobby. It's like every guy jerks off, but if someone told me jerking off is their hobby, it's like you are way too invested in something that maybe it's fun, but like it's not that fun. Like drinking beers is normal, but saying drinking beers is my hobby is f***ing weird. Story 26. As soon as I see a double standard, I'm out. You cancel or flake two or three times. We're supposed to just be okay with it. I say once I already have plans on a certain day, and now I'm an asshole that doesn't put her first. Her having guy friends is fine, and even if they're flirty, I'm insecure for even mentioning it but I have tons of girlfriends and it means I'm cheating or a slut. These people are insecure and controlling. They want a slave, not a companion. Story 27. Trust is key. 
Without trust, there's no basis for a relationship, not even as friends. Trust is very sacred. It takes a long time to build and only seconds to lose. Once trust is lost, it can never be regained. It has to be rebuilt from scratch, but it'll never be as sturdy as it once was. There's a lot of unworthy women running around wondering, where are all of the good men these days? Modern dating isn't even dating. It's a short interview before getting naked. Hookup culture ruined dating. Story 28. I'm not into the, we see or pursue others until we are officially in a relationship with one of them culture. It feels like a job interview. And love should not be a job interview. If we are past the first getting to know each other phase, which at most takes a couple of weeks and still flirting, they should not be flirting with or going after other people. If they do, I take it as either they weren't sincere about their feelings or they're players and not ready for a relationship. Both are deal breakers.